Good evening. I'd like to call the regular monthly meeting to order. Would everyone please rise for the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon you this evening asking for your guidance in our decision making. Give us the wisdom to make our judgments based on the best interests of this community and the children we serve. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Mr. Long, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Ms. Vocek. Mr. Campbell. Ms. Harris, Ms. Jackson, Here. Ms. Lee Bowman, Here. Mr. Long, Here. Ms. Lemoyne, Ms. Dysart, Here. Ms. Rodney, Here. Mr. Rodriguez, Here. Mr. Warner, Here. and Ms. White. Here. Thank you, Ms. Foche. Before we go on to our agenda items, um, at this time, I would like to um, take a point of privilege uh, um, to have a moment of silence for someone we lost in our education family, um, Ms. Pam Kassar. So if we could, um, please, let's take a moment of silence. Thank you. Today we pay tribute to Pam Kassar, a lady of remarkable grace and talent who built foundations for learning for so many high school students with her deep love for teaching and mathematics. And just as she inspired those students, she inspired generations of performers and audiences with her talent backstage. Her gift was in giving everyone on stage a chance to shine. Her influence and legacy will forever live on in the hearts and lives of her children, to all the students and performers that she loved and nurtured, and to all of her friends and colleagues who are blessed to have known her. Thank you, Pam, for being such a gift to so many of us. Thank you very much. And um, just to take this opportunity to um, give our deepest heartfelt condolences to the whole Kassar family. Um, from each of us, but um, Pam is, was just a, an amazing educator. She was incredible. She touched the lives of so many at Chelmet High School teaching math, and she also touched many lives in at the Chelmet Cultural Arts um, Center, where she was backstage most productions and, and prior to those productions, making them happen with costuming and so many other things. And uh, we, we just lost a, an incredible, person who gave a heart to her family, to God, and to um, her students for many, many years. And so, um, again, our deepest condolences go out to the, the family. Ms. Oche, do you want to say something? Yeah. Um, you know, I first met Pam in 1977 when I was teaching math at Shelman High School, and she came on as a student teacher and she and Charles were both student teaching at the same time, he in social studies and she in math. Uh, shortly thereafter, you know, she was married and they began to build their life here in St. Bernard. And I taught with her for many years at Shelmet High School and at that time it was an all boys school. And I guess one of the fondest memories, they, um, they because ours also had a little florist, floral business on the side. She was extremely creative and we used to, our beta club that I was the sponsor of, used to have the, or sponsor the honors banquet every year for the students. And since we were all boys, the boys were used to having to do the creative pieces of all of this too. And I would get Pam and she would, we get those, those little bricks that you get from the, you know, the um, floral places. And we get the ligustrum and the flowers, and you had all these 17 and 18 year old boys sitting there and making all the flower arrangements <laughs> for the honors banquets, and it was all under her direction. You know, mine was listen to what she says and do what she's telling you to do. <laughs> and the creativity that she had and had those young men do was just phenomenal while she was there teaching math. And then once she started her fight with um, her illness, 
and retired from us, the, what she gave back through the performing arts groups, uh, the costuming for all of the plays, it was just incredible. Our contribution to the students for over 40 years here within our school system. So she will be sorely missed. There's no question about it. Thank you, Ms. Ote. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, and just a final thing, too. Um, Charles is, you know, they, they were a team. They were a creative, beautiful team. And then her legacy lives on through her daughters, um, Annalise and um, Ariana, who, um, you know, make those performances go off like so well and wonderfully. So anyway, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Okay, at this time, um, we have had several requests for um, individuals to speak on a subject matter of um, school safety. And so uh, before we would ask for a motion on the floor to allow um, the audience to speak, I would like to um, ask, we have sign up cards for those of you who wish to speak. Is there anyone at this time who wants to speak who had not had a, an opportunity to fill out a card? Okay, anyone else? All righty. Okay, at this time I will entertain a motion. Mr. Long. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to uh, add an item to the agenda of uh, audience participation. Okay, on a particular subject, Mr. Long? Well, I'm not sure which subject these people want to sign up for. Um, I was told uh, school safety. School safety, okay. okay. I'll make that part of the motion. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, there's a motion by Ms. Harris. I mean second by Ms. Harris, excuse me. Okay, is there discussion on the motion? There being no discussion, roll call vote on the motion, please. Mr. Campbell? Four. Ms. Harris? Four. Ms. Jackson? Four. Ms. Lee Bowman? Four. Ms. Long? Four. Ms. Lemoyne? Four. Ms. Dysart? Four. Ms. Rodney? Four. Mr. Rodriguez? Four. Ms. Warner? Four. And Ms. White? Four. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Vote. Okay. Board members in your, um, in your folders also um, is uh, our policy file BCB1. And um, I'm not going to read the entire thing. I'm just reading. Um, you've had an opportunity to read it, but just for the, uh, those who are participating tonight, the um, individuals who have requested to speak have uh, a total of, of three minutes on an item that they, they wish to speak on, okay? So to allow everybody who wishes to speak time. Okay, so at this time we'll have our first speaker. It is Devin Cruz. Mr. Cruz, would you come up? Please. I am sorry. I misunderstood whether or not this would be like a dialogue, and I did not want to address any questions to you guys that I couldn't get a response from immediately. I'll defer that, and I'll just let everybody else speak. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have Christine Cop. I'll cap. And excuse me if I misspell, uh, mispronounce your name. Cop. Okay. That's what I thought. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Christine Kopp. Um, I have children um, throughout St. Bernard schools. I have a special needs child. He's at Trist, and then also have a freshman. He is at um, Shelman High this year. Um, the reason why I'm here tonight is because of the safety of our schools. Um, some recommendations um, set forth, I guess, would be possible metal detectors, something that we know that can help our children and their safety as well. Um, if there's some type of protocol for non-students to enter the premises. I'm sorry, it's kind of um, echoing. Oh, you need me to get closer? Okay. If there's any type of protocol for non-students to enter the premises and um, any type of safety precautions involving fights or a way that the parents can access it. Those are just my notes on this. So, thank you. Thank you for your 
for your uh, appearance and you speaking tonight. We appreciate it and your thoughts. Okay, next item is uh, Lance Rodney. Good evening. Um, of course, you all know we hear about school safety. And uh, I thought we addressed this issue a couple of months back last year uh, with a young lady by the name of Quinesha Green and her son, her two sons, that had uh, an issue with a student coming on campus with a gun. And that to me is, is, is a warning sign. We had warning signs before that, and now is the time to make some serious changes, I would, I would think so. Um, too many times we individualize situations and isolate situations that come to find in a lot of issues, in a lot of situations we come to isolate those incidents so we won't be recognized by the media or the public. But the more we be recognized by those, those entities, the more we get solutions. The best thing to do is not to hide. Um, Preventative measures need to be put in place. Uh, I'm not saying that anybody's doing anything wrong. I just say, I'm just feeling that we need preventative measures. Preventative measures so things won't happen in the long run, making a long-term plan. I'm pretty sure we have a long-term plan for safety. However, there's not a long-term plan for immediate safety that, that's happening now. Um, too much, too often, you know, things get missed uh, in hallways. You know, we used to have truancy. I don't know if you guys have truancy anymore. Um, I don't know if you guys have uh, resource, enough resource officers. Um, because not too many eyes can be on every child at every time in every hallway. If you had enough officers, you know, you can put eyes on certain things and things can be paid attention to immediately. Um, but I just think that uh, you guys need to rethink your um, safety plan. Um, like the young lady said, metal detectors would do some justice. Um, uh, protocol for non-entry students that's coming into the school. I mean, I don't know if you have hall passes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the, the safety measures are, but you know, there's a lot of incidents that I think you guys pass up or miss. So I just think that those things need to be paid attention to, that's all. Um, so, if it, if it can be further discussion on it, on, on what we can do as a community to come up with solutions, I think we should have a discussion on that uh, long term. And I think you guys are bright and intelligent. I know you've been in the school system for a pretty long time. So I think we can come up with some good ideas on how we can make this a long term plan instead of a short term plan. You know, I know we have some short term ideas uh, with police officers and everything, but police officers have other uh, jobs too. But we need. We need jobs within the school. And you know, I don't know where the budget stands for employing people to, uh, to do that. You need professional people. I guess they need to be trained, uh, certain things. Because kids sometimes need to be handled, maybe sometimes on the physical level, as well as a, a, a verbal level. You know? uh, so I think they need to have some training for some, some resource officers to come in. That's all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rodney. Okay, next we have Jason Dana. I'm Jason. Jason Dana. Um, I came here tonight to ask questions and to try to get answers, but I see that's not the process here. So I just want to, uh, so I think <clears throat> what needs to be done is some type of, I guess, a meeting to establish policies that will go for the schools, for security, what's going to happen, what's going to be the process, what's going to be implemented in each school. So uh, not exactly what I signed up here for. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Next, we have Pooja Prazid. Good 
Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you for giving me the chance to speak. Uh, my name is Pooja Prasid, and I'm speaking on behalf of the St. Bernard Democrats. Um, I'm a resident of 7900 Patricia Street in Chalmette. Um, I am requesting that the school board develop a comprehensive plan for conflict pre prevention and resolution among students. Um, there are programs out there for uh, restorative justice processes before and after a conflict. Um, as well as dealing with student fighting and immediate threats. Uh, peer mediation programs are one such example uh, where students can learn critical thinking, problem solving, and a sense of responsibility, which can provide an alternate pathway uh, to violent conflict or unhealthy social behaviors. Um, I'm also behalfing on, um, speaking on behalf of other members who have requested that um, they are requesting metal detectors, um, they are requesting more guidance counselors, and uh, more mental health uh, treatment. Um, thank you for giving me the time to speak. Thank you, Pooja. Okay, next we have Bo Bowman. Okay. Thank you. Next we have Perry Duplessis. Good evening. Hi. Uh, we, we, we talk about school safety but it seemed like nobody would want to do anything. And um, Ms. Boak, I emailed you three times. My concerns, is I am a grandmother, aunt, and auntie of the parish school system. And most of all, my granddaughter. And it's just a lot of stuff that's going on. You got kids vaporing in the school. You know, nobody's saying anything about it. They hide me. We had a school board meeting, I mean, a, a, a principal meeting, even with Mr. Powell. And it seemed like my concern is not being addressed. And it's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. And even though with the gun safety and all of that, day we had an incident at the school, at, at Trish School, that one of the kids threatened to shoot the school up. It is a disaster just waiting to happen. When it's going to happen, I don't know. But we got 12 members. Keisha's a new member, but everybody here seems to be been here for a couple of years now. And it's, it's time to do something. It's not time just to set back. The, the, the state got plenty of money. If we, you know, if we leave some, in the, some cookies in the cookie jar, we probably can stop this problem. But if we keep taking it out the cookie jar for stuff that don't make a lot of sense, then we don't have money to put nowhere at all, period. And I am a grandmother, and I am an auntie, and I, I love all of my children, and I'm, I'm a mother and a grandmother to anybody else, child, who want me to be too, okay? But the fact that the matter is it's time for the school boards to get off the butt, excuse my French, and start doing something. I mean, is this a disaster waiting to happen? And then you're gonna call me and tell me, oh, the, your child got shot, your granddaughter got shot, your niece or your nephew got shot, wow. But how many meetings we gonna have? And nobody's doing anything at all. And enough is enough. It needs some intervene. If it don't happen here, I'm taking the next step. You never answered my last email. Me and the principal, all we did was just had a, a verbal argument just going back and forth, back and forth. And I'm just fed up with it. Something needs to happen. Somebody kids gonna get hurt. No matter what color you are, I come from a multicolor uh, family, multiracial family, so there is no prejudice in me at all. Period, because I know both sides the, the, the tracks. But if we don't do something, not just on our black kids, the Caucasian, Mexican, whatever, we need to do something. And if my voice is not is being heard tonight, if there is no resources, I'm taking it to the next level that we're going to be media, news media, state, everybody in on it. Don't take it as a threat. Just take it as a concerned grandmother and auntie. I'll stand behind you, honey. Okay, thank you, Mary. And next we have Chad Merritt. Hello. My name is Chad Merritt. I'm from down the road. Reggio. I normally don't come to these kind of meetings. <laughs> I'm, you know, my own self and uh, I stay away from everything, but yet I got some uh, kids growing up in this parish. 
And uh, <clears throat> I've been trying, so I had come up here for two separate issues. One for what's going on in Shumman High School, right? That's, that's just crazy. Like, my son's in eighth grade. Where's he going next, right? He only got one school. <laughs> So, uh, so he's going to Shumman High School next year with all this stuff y'all got going, let y'all letting it happen, uh, you know. And uh, but then I came up here for another issue too on uh, what was going on in Tris. Uh, I called uh, numerous times and all, tried to get in touch, especially with Miss Doris and uh, Miss Angie. Uh, help, help me out. I don't know who Angie is. Holy was her. Yeah, uh, very nice lady. Uh, helped me out, get in touch with, uh, you know, about getting some stuff situated, and I ain't gonna lie, it took three months, I've been trying to get in touch with y'all about some Board of Health issues that was going on in Trist that I never did get a phone call about back or a response back. I even spoke to uh, my old principal, Mr. Powell. I remember, born and raised here. Yeah. And uh, I got nothing back. Ms. Colburn, nothing back. But all of a sudden, I got a call back today from Ms. Colburn. And now things are going to get issued, and the issue is going to get end up getting straightened out, from what I understand when I talk to her and all. But what I understand, though, but I was coming up here no matter what, talking to her and not talking to her. But what I understand, though, is that when you got a child situation that's going on, and uh, Ms. if y'all talk to Ms. Colburn, you'll find out exactly. I won't bring it up because I promised to give her my word I wouldn't bring it up because she's going to say she's going to resolve it this time. But it's been three months I've been trying to get this situation solved, and it's ridiculous that I gotta come up here and get in front of y'all's faces to be able to get y'all to understand and hear from me. Now, what that man back there said about y'all, you know, no answer back, and all, I didn't understand that. I, didn't, I thought this was a, a meeting I was gonna be able to get a response back from y'all about my issue that I was having. But now, nah, it don't seem like that, especially what that man back there said. So y'all just listen to what I'm saying, right? So y'all gonna take notes like Mr. Powell did, right? Y'all ain't gonna do nothing. Look into it very deeply, because it's Board of Health issues, and I'm telling you right now, if y'all get it situated out, I'm gonna get Board of Health involved. Now, second issue that I had, I wanted to talk to y'all about, is Shaman High School. Tell me this. <clears throat> Would you send your Sunday next year? <laughs> Think about that. Y'all about to make me have to move from my homeland because y'all can't resolve out this Shaman High School bull crap that's coming in from the New Orleans. All this, uh, you know, they, they, they got a little school where I mean, they're they could come here and all that, yeah, and whatever. But anyways, I might be going past my time, whatever. I'm good with all that. But the Shaman High School issue, if y'all don't solve that out, how am I supposed to send my son there? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're going to make me move. Thank you. Okay, next we have Robert Larson. Good evening. My name is Robert Larson, and I have two small children at Lacoste Elementary. I also recently resigned from central office after 14 years as a data analyst. If we do not take COVID into account, Louisiana Believes reports that our district used to have approximately 50 in-school suspensions and 35 alternate site expulsions per year. With the issues in our schools today, it concerns me greatly to see that the same Louisiana Believes state portal shows that no students have been expelled in our schools in the last five years. Similarly, our art of school suspension rates now seem to be only 5% in 2022 where in 2017 and before, the rate hovered around 12% or higher, over one in 10 children. The sharp decline in the reporting of discipline incidents concerns me because our schools certainly do not seem safer today than they were in 2017. As a former employee, I feel as though officials you have employed at central office have, have actively handicapped our school disciplinarians by preventing them pro from properly tracking issues. There seems to be a festering culture within our district of victim blaming, giving fifth chances to those that did not deserve a third, and giving more scrutiny to public perception than to the safety of the children you have hired those to entrust on a daily basis. 
Our district attorney reports year after year that almost no truancy cases are being sent through his office, and our district has no centralized attendance office at all. We all have reports of students and staff being beaten in our schools, in the streets, to and from the buses, and our sheriff's office is now being forced into a position of stepping in where your chosen district administration has refused to even try. You have a superintendent who has sent a cautionary letter from the Louisiana Department of Ethics more than a year ago, a financial department currently under FCC investigation. Excuse and me, And stories Larson, in our papers of not only escalating violence, subject. but also questionable in-house sympathy. Mr. Larson, please stick to the subject. I don't bring individuals As into it. As a parent and a citizen of our parish, I would like to know who this board is going to bring in to address these issues and when it's going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Larson. Okay, so that was the end of the uh, residents who wish to speak at this time. We, just to let everyone who's, who spoke tonight, we will take all of your concerns under advisement, definitely, and, um, you know, uh, we will get, we have each of your phone numbers and but we will take your comments and your um, concerns to heart okay um, Miss Voce do you want to address anything at this time well if you want me to did you want me to go through the emergency plan is that what you're looking yes, for if you would okay at this time if you would go okay. through it all right. Since um, it's, it's not on the agenda, but we made a motion. So okay. This would be the appropriate time, please. All right. Uh, I was asked just to go through again and outline the um, school safety and emergency plans that we have in place from a you know physical facilities point of view, and um, you know staff at particular schools and such. Back in the fall of uh, 2015, together with the local office of emergency preparedness and John Ram, who runs that local office, um, he secured a grant where we partnered with the LSU Stevenson Disaster Management Institute, and that was run by Colonel Grant Mitchell, who has extensive experience in emergency plans and um, school safety. So we conducted a series of meetings, and in those meetings was the local parish government, the Office of um, Emergency and Local Preparedness. We had the school administrators there, the Sheriff's Department, the Fire Department, the EMS services, um, all of the local agencies that deal with school safety and emergency preparedness. So we spent that year, and plans were finalized in 2016, and LSU presented um, these plans to this board at that particular time, and each individual school had emergency and safety plan. There were also plans for active shooters. There were plans for any types of emergencies that would come. All of these services of the agencies within the parish were centralized, there were sections and set up in case anything would happen, who would do what and at what time. And all of that was done back in 2016. We then instituted, um, you know, the cameras and the video surveillance systems at each individual school with the elementary schools and such. We had the single point of entry um, where Visitors would have to come in and be buzzed in. Recently, we had updated that in Andrew Jackson and St. Bernard into further constructing those front offices with that single point of entry. So that was done five or six years ago. So what we did then in the fall of 2021, we looked to see what we could do to update those plans in light of what was happening all around the country, as well as in other places throughout the country, as well as here in Louisiana. So again, we contracted with the LSU Disaster Management Institute, the Stevenson Institute, under the direction of Brant Mitchell. 
and he did an additional walkthrough of every school facility that we have in relation to the plans that had existed at that point. And we, re, um, we upgraded those particular plans. The Sheriff's Department has blueprints of all of our schools, the SWAT team has done training exercises in every one of our school facilities. Our maps have been updated and we've had these collaborative meetings. So we spent the entire 21-22 school year in doing that with those particular walkthroughs. So we have those emergency plans which are devised for every school site. At the July meeting here in 2022, we had the sheriff here, sheriff's department here, um, the DA was here, the emergency preparedness people, the local governmental agencies, and made the presentation to this board and to the public on those, the existence of those plans and what was done. Um, the plans, of course, for security, I mean, are not, they're not available for the public to look at because all of the video that's involved in it, all of the plans that are involved in it are only accessible through our local governmental bodies and the agencies that are entrusted with helping to protect, you know, protect our students and our employees. At the beginning of this school year, each of the principals had talked with their faculties about those plans. There was a little faculty, small little handbook with what to do in each of those situations. And then at parent conference night, it was a small a little emergency plan booklet handed out to all of the parents who came with those numbers and what to do in those particular cases. So what has happened with those plans? We were the pilot program for the state of Louisiana, this school system was. And at the conference that is going to be held in this coming June, that we'll be doing that presentation, the LSU people with the Disaster Management Institution along with us will be making those presentations and that these are the model plans that are going to be used by all school systems within the state. So from that point of view, we have that, you know, under control. And I just want to say in terms of our sheriff's department, who's extremely responsive, they have for years been doing those drills in the schools. Uh, the lockdown situations we've had within the first 30 days of the year, every one of our schools had to do these lockdown drills, which were overseen by both the fire department and the um, sheriff's department as well. And this particular school year, we've had three or four incidents where we have done lockdowns in the schools. We have done a lockdown twice at Araby Elementary School um, because the sheriff's department at that time were involved in um, a chase of individuals around the school. So we did the lockdown, there was communication between us and the Sheriff's Department, and then after anything like that happens, we do a debriefing with them about things that we can do better, what we've learned from the situation, and how we go forward. We also did um, a lockdown drill at Smith Elementary School when there was an incident there um, as well, and then we debriefed with the Sheriff's Department. Um, as I'm sure everyone is aware, last week at uh, Shamut High School, we also did a lockdown drill when there was a um, report that there was an adult female walking into the back of the Cultural Arts Center with what looked like a weapon. So the Sheriff's Department immediately dispensed the units um, and we had done the lockdown at the Ninth Grade Academy with it and it of course, it turned out to be one of our teachers in the uh, preparation for the play had been moving props from her vehicle into the building, and that's what the people saw. But it was, you know, a practice with that 
particular um, drill that we did. So at that point, from that standpoint, if there is a situation which arises in the schools, in any one of our schools, uh, those plans are in place. The Sheriff's Department has then immediate, immediate um, access to all the video that we have at that point in real time. They, each of our administrators has a direct radio that goes directly to the sheriff's representative there. They come in and we have the process where they take over that particular piece, then supported by us. And we have done the drills with those kinds of situations. So from that point of view, you know, those have been done and really, I think done it extremely well with a lot of input from the um, professionals really across the nation, because Colonel Mitchell is one of the most renowned ones across the country in this particular area, and LSU has hired him to run that particular institute. Um, along with that, and I know that we're talking about mental health services and restorative practices and things that we're doing with the kids. You know, at Shelman High School, I mean, we have counselors at every school, or a counselor at each of our elementary and middle schools. Um, we have the social workers and psychologists from our central office that spend time at each school. We've hired additional staff. For example, at the high school, we have four grade level counselors mainly. Then we've got one which does primarily 504 testing, scholarship evaluation. We've hired two people who, have, who are social workers and behavioral specialists over and above that to work more directly with kids. We have a CTE counselor. We have the, the social worker at the clinic that runs um, a group with those particular kids. So we have a total of 11 people who are certified there to do counseling of some sort and uh, you know, certified or licensed social workers or behavioral specialist in that, you know, in that facility to work directly with the students. Um, at the middle school, we've just hired an additional person for Trist and Andrew Jackson to do similar in addition to the counselor who is there. So we're making more of uh, an effort in terms of hiring additional staff because our counselors who do a tremendous job have a lot to do in terms of school counseling as well as individual counseling with children. You know, at Raleigh Alternative School, we have um, a social worker directly assigned to that school to counsel kids. We have an, a, three additional social workers that do direct services and therapy with those students at Raleigh where they employ all of these practices that people have been mentioning with the students there. We have an additional um, social worker that comes with the special education people. So we have a total of five that are there all day, every day. And then we have a um, contract with LSU Med School where we've got additional therapy services coming from the staff at LSU and um, one or two physicians that come once a week or psychiatrists that come once a week to work with those students. And if any of like medications need to be updated or whatever or available to work with those particular students. And if students at Raleigh then go back to their regular district schools, those three social workers that we have under contract at Raleigh spend a half a day or whatever and they work with those kids in the transition back to the traditional school. <coughs> we have also done the TBR. Um, TBRI training, which is the trust-based relational um, intervention training. We began that process with three people on, on each of the staff to be trained at each and every school. 
and we are in the process now that those trainings are going back to the school for whole faculty. We've done the whole faculties at Raleigh. We've done a lot at Merrill Elementary School with that. They did a pilot last year on it, and now it is going throughout all of our schools. So as teachers talk with kids and, and in terms of how to handle situations where there are conflicts with kids. So we're working at it from different angles, from the angle of more support with mental health services, as well as on the other side, when we're looking at um, you know, consequences for actions when students are getting into a fight. To say that um, you know, it seems to be a reflection of a lot of what is happening in society today that more people seem to exhibit more aggressive behavior, not only within our schools, but within our communities across the country. And we have been working very, very hard with our students to try to impress upon them there are other ways to handle conflict other than to return aggressive behavior. And that is something that uh, I think one of the people mentioned tonight that the parents want to work with us to do in terms of developing what can they do to help in that endeavor. What the support of parents in when students are exhibiting those behaviors, what do you do in that particular case? And, um, you know, we go from um, if it's severe disruptions or if um, the students are a super in a, an aggressive manner, we do take the most severe consequence, which is removal from the school. If it is a fight that two are having, you know, two kids are having, then we do what we've done for years and years and years. We, we'll go through either with the counselors, or I know I was speaking with Mr. Schneider the other day, where he will, when they come back, talk with them about is this a resolved conflict? Um, are we finished with this? Are we shaking hands? What are we doing at this point? And we do have situations where there are some kids that within their communities are having major issues with each other. And at times it does spill over into the school. Usually when we analyze the data and we're looking at it as to what is causing this or what kids are saying to us, we're finding that the conflicts begin at home in the community, or they, to be perfectly honest, begin with this, where they are talking about each other in a very negative way. When you look at the stream that goes back and forth, and then that spills over into the school setting. Uh, so we are seeing more and more of that. So we would like to work with parents in terms of how are we resolving conflicts both at home and in the community and in the schools? And how do we partner together to make sure that our kids know how to resolve a conflict other than through this aggressive action and these behaviors? So our first, our, you know, our first reaction is how do we get these two kids who are fighting or who have that conflict to talk it out and to come full circle with is what we call the restorative practices? And then if this escalates, how do we get the parents then involved to say, you know, we've got to stop kids from, I guess, as my niece would say, being so mean to each other in their posts and not bring that over, how to get them to talk about their differences and try to resolve their differences in a less aggressive manner. So we are working on that. Um, we will be convening our disciplinary committee parish-wide very soon, which we do at each, each spring. And in those, um, that committee, we have school administrators, we have teachers, parents, and whatever to recommend changes in our guide to student conduct. So we will probably be looking at some of those changes too. 
and I think that we'll probably, you know, look at some changes in how kids communicate and how we communicate with them and what consequences will be for communication that is not appropriate on school grounds and we would then ask parents to join with us in that to help us to enforce that and to impress upon uh, their children as well as to what to do, what steps do you take to resolve those particular conflicts. So from the physical facilities part of it or to the plan that we have school-wide, you know, it is probably on paper um, one of the best plans you're ever going to find because it was done by the experts in those areas. It wasn't just put together by us. It was put together by all of these law enforcement agencies and EMS services and the experts around the country with the best practices. As far as working directly with our students in terms of how to resolve their individual conflicts, we are still working on that. We're looking at hiring more, to be honest, uh, mental health professionals. And if y'all know of anybody who I know we've been advertising, I know you told me your own school has been advertising, for that. So if we are aware of people in that field, then send them to us. We'll be happy to interview them and we have spaces for them. But the, the crux of the matter is getting to those students individually and how do we get them to resolve a conflict in a non-aggressive manner. And in all honesty, it is usually brought onto the school from the community. That's where it, that's where it starts but it ends with us. And to be honest, many, many kids um, will tell us or tell that school administrator, yeah, we're just gonna have the fight in school because we know nothing bad is gonna happen at school. So it's what they used to tell us, we'll just fight because it's within a protected environment rather than, being, than doing it outside, which is not helpful at the school level, we would like them to be able to resolve the conflict in a way that is not fighting at all. But this is what we are constantly working toward and dealing with. Um, and I'll, I'll just address the one issue, because I know some people were saying about protocols for um, people who are not students to come on. The, the young man who came onto the campus at Shelmet High School that people are talking about that day had been a student with us since he's four years old. He was um, with us all throughout our school system. And at the beginning of this school year, he had left us, and I'm not gonna go into his family situation, to transfer to outside of this community to another school. That day he came back, he was trying to re-register at school. He had some friends there that he was not happy with. He put on his uniform and he had his identification. He was stopped. He had his ID. The people knew him because he had been at the school earlier that um, this year. And they thought he was coming back in to re-register but he happened to stop and get into an argument and he had a fight with two other kids at the school. That was the person that we were talking about um, who entered the school. So just to clarify that particular situation. Okay, okay. are there any board members who have questions or comments? Mr. Rodriguez? Uh, from what I gathered, the people that came here warned about safety in the schools, more or less, especially at Shelman High School. You had spoke about a, a comprehensive plan that's basically y'all been working on for two years, and you mentioned something about a meeting in June. I think a lot of people are concerned. A great program with mental health, trying to stop it before it starts, that usually that's going to bear fruit, but it usually takes time. For right now, from what I gather from people here, they would like to know what can be done right now to get something done. Now, I, I, I read things, uh, ask people about what's going on. It would seem like to me, uh, Mr. Plessis uh, was uh, well-spoken. 
it seems like to me if a teacher's getting punched or two teachers are going hit because they're breaking up a fight, it would seem to me, well, where is security? Now, it's a large campus separated by a highway, four lanes with a neutral ground. Maybe we might have to look into possibly nobody likes a lot of people walking through the school uh, for security, but maybe we might need a few more people to where teachers shouldn't be having to get involved. So maybe the public would be willing to have more security in the school for safety. And with this comprehensive plan is great. COVID was a big issue, kids locked up. So maybe, you know, we ought to consider trying to get more security, especially at Shelmet High School, and maybe teachers wouldn't be involved uh, in trying to break up an altercation. That's just something to look into. Because okay. we're not worried about, I, I, I would feel that if somebody drops off a loved one and we don't have a little more security, maybe that shall met now, not in June, that what, what would I feel like if, you know, you wake up one day, you drop off a loved one at the school and they, they're not there anymore. My wife just passed away. She was doing okay, going to the room, she's gone. But there was nothing I could do about that. But I feel there's something I can do about this because how would I feel if I come here and somebody loses a loved one because we don't have enough security. Metal detectors, that's, that's for another day to talk about it, but something has to be done because if I come here, the, the parish is, is very violent now. It's sad to say it's older people, younger people, real young people, and steps have to be taken that y'all didn't have to worry about 10 years ago because it's, it, it, it's a violent place. It's sad to say a lot of young people are violent and we got to do something as a board because if I come in here and we haven't done anything and some student don't come back home, I won't, I won't be able to live with myself because this, I, I, this is what I'm here for, for safety. That's how I got elected. Mm -hmm. And I hope as a board we can address that right real soon. We got to get something done now and then that comprehensive program will bear fruit. And then when you go on to do something in June, that's great, but we in end of February so, uh, you know, as a board, I think we've got to consider, let's, let's make a move. You know, the young man come up here that was during the election. He come up here that they had that, the fight when, when the teacher got hit. And most people feel that nothing's been done from point A to tonight point B. So I think we ought to get something done. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Anyone else? Wish to speak on this issue? I would like, I would like to say something. Okay, Ms. Rodriguez. Just to pick back on what Mr. Rodriguez said, I do uh, agree that we do have a, a, a very stern safety plan that uh, addresses building issues, addresses an active shooter, addresses any, I'm pretty sure addresses any issue, like if the plant or something has an uh, unfortunate accident and being shell men is in close proximity, how to secure those kids. And I think we've done very good with that. But moving forward, we do need to address the inside of the building. We have to address our kids. We're working in a heavily, heavy populated school where kids are coming from all over. And I'm not talking about if there are any residents that are out of parish. I mean, we have, we got every kid from Araby all the way to the lack of a better term, the end of the world, all in under one umbrella. And it's, Scientific, when you pile too many people on top of each other, mayhem happens, confusion happens, fights happen. And no, we cannot control every fight in the building, I understand that. But we can take some precautionary measures that will stop, or maybe, for the lack of a better term, have, you know, we won't have anybody getting severely hurt. I know, um, no, as a parent, I don't want my children always going to a school that has a metal detector, but if a metal detector can detect a child bringing a knife, a gun, or something to school, I'm good with it. If we have to go to see-through book sets, Jefferson Parish does it, mesh book that it has to, something has to be done. If we take small precautionary measures until we can work in a bigger, a work into the bigger plan to address what's in the building. I think we've satisfied the parents and we've heard the parents, but we have to be more proactive and not reactive in all our measures. And unfortunately right now we're working in a reactive 
way because so many things have happened. You know, I, as a parent of a, a, a senior at Chalmette, the things that have already been seen to the public that unfortunately I got to social media are not just the only things. There have been numerous fights that there have been nobody around that have happened. And God for sake, if one of those person, one of those students would have gotten hurt, we would have to answer to that. That's very unfortunate and that's a no-no on our side of the table. But what needs to be done and what desperately has to be done, we have to collectively work with parents because first, first and foremost, you guys know what's going on. First and foremost, you know what's going on in the community. So I'm not gonna say parents are not doing your job, you're doing the best that you can as a parent, but when you send your child to school, you want them to be safe, and I get that. But we had a talk outside of this, and I hope, and I hope that you know, everything went on, hear, heard ears and not deaf ears, and that we're going to work towards it. Like Mr. Henry, I ran on safety. I ran on making the school, making the school system as um, accessible to everybody as possible. But safety has to take the front seat right now. Because, like I said, heavy populated school, piling people on top of each other, it's just a recipe that they're gonna keep fighting each other and keep things and keep happening. And I don't want it to be where even our teachers are scared to teach. Um, there have been numerous teachers that have been hurt and we gotta think of the safety of the teacher. And I don't want a teacher to see a fight brutally happening and feel like I can't afford to get into it because I have to worry about my safety. So we, we, we're festering and sitting on top of a foundation that is slowly crumbling and we have to do something about it. So I just hope that we can do some short-term plans and then work into a long-term plan with the awesome plan that we have already to address the inside of the building like we've addressed the outside of the building. Okay, Ms. Harris. Yes, thank you so much. And I, I do see this, I think, from the board perspective, but also as a school leader perspective. And I understand that it takes good school culture to ensure that our students are safe. And I know that that is the superintendent's utmost concern is having good school culture. And I hope that we will continue, as you said, superintendent, to look for the investments that we have to make in our schools. I know that we have teachers who are concerned about the safety in the building. I know that we have teachers who have recently retired who were concerned about the safety in the building. And I believe that we have to make sure that the trainings that you're talking about are re-delivered and that our staff is fully comfortable with their supports. But you're right, folks. Teachers should not be the ones breaking up fights. That's not their space. We don't want them to have to do that. I hope that when we look at this new budget for the new year that you will bring to us a budget that focuses on mental health and the opportunities that we have to provide our students with the supports that they deserve and our teachers with the training that they need to ensure that our students are safe. And I would hope parents, I would say this directly to you, it, these are public meetings. We need you at the meetings. We need you to be here because we need to hear from you. We need to know that you are involved because you have to go home and tell your children, this is what is expected and I expect you to follow the rule. We have to have your support here in this building and at home so that our faculty and staff can ensure that your students have a safe environment. So I wanna thank you all and commend you all for coming tonight and implore that you come every meeting going forward. We need you here. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Anyone else? Okay. I just want to thank the parents for coming tonight and those um, who gave us their concern. And um, I too, as I think along with all the board members, definitely or think safety is, is a, a, a priority for our students and also for our teachers. And um, our administration is working toward, um, and this board is working toward safety um, in the future, but we will continue to take steps that um, will ensure um, more safety for our students and for our uh, employees and faculty members. And um, you know, we want everybody to be safe in uh, a very positive learning environment. And um, so thank you for your appearance tonight and we will continue to address your concerns. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, um, the, we've already closed the, um, 
be speaking from the public. So there's not a debate. Okay. Well, we well. Excuse. Tell my granddaughter. Okay, this is what you need to do. Is something we we need to ensure safety, and we need to let our students and and our, our community know that we're going to take measures to keep our children safe, and we want them to feel safe. So, um, and we're not in a debate, and we're you know it. Okay, but you already had an opportunity to speak, and we're all concerned about safety, and we're you're out of order. I'm sorry, ma'am. Okay, one person at a time. Okay, are there any other board members who want to speak? The public had an opportunity to speak, and okay. If there are no other um, comments, we will move on to the agenda to the next item. The next item um, of the communications update, Super News. Do, is um, Ms. Schneider here tonight or Ms. No, uh, uh, Lemoyne. Mr. Lemoyne. Mr. Lemoyne. Good evening. Good evening. Um, happy to be here with you today. Um, what you're about to see is the 72nd episode of Super News. So this is something that we've been doing now for six years to share the good things that happen in our schools each day. Um, each time we have a certain um, guest team. So this time we have Smith and we have St. Bernard Middle School. It runs about eight minutes. So sit back and enjoy this month's Super News. There were owls marching to victory, ballerinas twirling through winter, and posse scholars earning prestigious scholarships. All these stories and more on this episode of Super News. Hello and welcome to Super News, where we take a look back at all of the good things happening in our school district. We're broadcasting today from St. Bernard Middle and we'll meet their Super News team in just a bit. But for now, we'll kick things off with a welcome to our new school board. Here we see the recent swearing-in ceremony where three of our newest board members joined their fellow board members in taking the oath of office, serving the people of our schools and of our community. And speaking of serving, congratulations to the new offices for this board, Diana Dysart and Catherine Lemoyne, who were chosen unanimously to be the respective president and the vice president for the St. Bernard Parish School Board. We wish them well. Thank you, fellow board members. I'm humbled and, and also honored to serve as president. And um, I appreciate your support of confidence and your vote of confidence. And um, I look forward to working with each and every one of you individually and as a board as a whole to do great things for our students in the future. The Shaman High School Band has also been very busy of late, bringing joy and fun to the League of Angels, Our Lady of Lords, and the crew of Nemesis. The revelry and music continued into the parade season. Winning the Battle of the Bands and leading several crews were just some of the highlights of the carnival season. You know, several of these musicians were also deserving kudos as five owls recently auditioned and were accepted into the Louisiana Music Educators Association District Honor Band. A tremendous honor to be accepted into this prestigious performing group. Congratulations to these five standouts. Three of these students also auditioned made the LMEA Jazz Honor Band. Congratulations to Blair, Samantha, and Daniel for being selected. It truly is a testament to their talent and hard work. And now we'll go from musical stars to our superstars as we head to Violet and Smith Elementary to meet its Super News team. Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Keith. And welcome to Smith for our Superstar Super News. We'll begin with some big news from our Beta Club. At the recent state convention and competition, our school won first place in the Performing Arts Small Group competition. We also finished in the top five in the Solo Duo Trio competition and are so excited to be going to Kentucky this summer to take part in the national competition. Thanks to our sponsors, teachers, parents, and everyone who supported our beta club. 
And speaking of support, we'd like to give a shout out to our Cake Kids who are committed to helping others as seen when the group hosted a food drive to help families in need. We appreciate all you do in the service of others. We also appreciate our grandparents. Here we see some of the fun that was a part of the event. With the 70s theme, the day featured games, costumes, and a great soul training line. Our last story for today highlights another special event taking place here at school, Greek Day. As part of our unit in studying Greece, our students enjoyed the food, the customs, and wore the costumes of that ancient period. It really brought learning to life. Hey, Lily, I was just wondering, do you like Greek cheese? You better believe it. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time from Smith, the home of the superstars. Bye. Thanks, superstars. Other performers enjoying the spotlight recently were those who are taking part in this year's after-school ballet program. This after-school ballet program is open to students across the district and provides them with professional training and performance opportunities. The students at Irby also took to the stage when it hosted its Irby Talent Show. Here we see some of the talented alligators performing as part of the fun in the spotlight. And now we'll aim our spotlight on today's other Super News crew, featured here at St. Bernard Middle. Let's meet the High Flying Eagles. Hello, I'm Brody Juris. And I'm Mary Morrell, and welcome to St. Bernard Middle School for today's Super News. We'll tip things off with a look at our girls' basketball team, who went undefeated during the season. And, for the first time ever, our team won in the playoffs, earning them title of district and Metro champions. It was a great season for our Lady Eagles and a true testament to talent and teamwork. Congratulations. And speaking of hoops, our team also took part in a fun game as part of a fundraiser. Competing against our faculty and staff, students purchased courtside seats for the big game and funds were used in support of our sports programs. I tell you, Mary, those basketball players are really cool. It must be because they have so many fans. I guess. Our Bell's Dance team is also doing good things, taking part in a pair of major dance competitions this season. First, they traveled to Lafayette for the American All-Star State Competition. There, they competed in palm kick and hip-hop and received superior ratings in third place in kick. Additionally, Ricky Simon and Kylie DePola took home third place as performers. This duo also took first place at the Mardi Gras Classic Competition. Palm received a superior rating, second place, for kick and fifth place for hip hop. The team even took home a technique award for the kick dance. And now we'll go from high kicks to high expectations as we take a look at some of our daily literacy programs. At St. Bernard, we celebrate reading every day during home run, reading, writing, and reflecting on what we have read. Doing this helps us all become better readers and writers. Homerooms also compete in a word read competition and get prizes for entering different club levels, including the highest, the millionaires. Once students pass enough AR tests to be at a million words read, they can go on a field trip to Barnes & Noble at the end of the year. Wow, Barnes & Noble's. I'd sure like to book my trip there. Anyway, I guess that's all for now here at St. Bernard Middle. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Eagles. And just as Eagles soar to new heights, so too do some of our very best students at Shaman High School. Recently, two of them, Anna Nguyen and Kai Williams, were notified that they had been awarded Posse Scholarships, a prestigious four-year scholarship, each valued at over $250,000. Nguyen will attend Case Western Reserve University, while Williams will enroll at Tulane University this fall. Over the last several years, Shaman High School seniors have earned nearly $5 million in Posse Scholarship money, attending prestigious universities across the country. Special thanks to David Ballard, the district's high school teacher of the year, who serves as the posse coordinator and who brings these credible opportunities to all of our students. And speaking of the best, we'd like to congratulate the Lady Owls basketball team on one of its best seasons. After an excellent district showing and a top 10 state ranking, the Lady Owls won two playoff games and for the first time in 29 years, advanced to the quarterfinals. It was a great run for the team. Congratulations to the coaches and players on a great season. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Super News, where we always let the Super News roll.
Great job, Mr. LeMoyne and um, men from Penn and t to the students who did a great job of, of speaking and presenting their um, uh, all the achievements at the schools. Great job. And every day kids are doing great things and teachers are doing after school activities with them and it's just a really a good time to be able to showcase all the good every time we can. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lemoyne. Very and, good. And just piggybacking on that before, and, and I'll do that instead of waiting till the end of the meeting, but at the um, beta convention, especially at the elementary group, you know, Smith always has gone and has done tremendously well and has gone on to national competition as well. And they did extremely well with the song fest and, and the activities that they were in. <coughs> Lacoste also placed um, and maybe you can tell me exactly, um, Ms. Jackson. First it was the <laughs> first place in musicology, and then one of our performers won um, placed in a performance solo, which qualified them all to go to nationals. Yeah. And then some students from Goche also qualified I to go. I think they had some performing students that qualified. Right, right. Right. You and know. then Smith had some qualifiers as well. Well, Smith yeah. always has the qualifiers go nationally, doing extremely a great job at the convention. So I'm glad to see that we're having more of our schools do that participation. So we, I know that we're going to be going to, many of these are going to be going to nationals. So I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot of fundraising to help. <laughs> help these kids and families um, get there as well. And I think when- Where's the answers? What? Where's the answers? This year it is um, Louisville, in Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. You know, so it's, it's uh, around different places, but you know, it's a wonderful opportunity for kids to go there and showcase their talents and do really, really good things. And that particular group, the Beta Club, is, is just a, a wonderful group for our kids you know, as they go all the way through school, elementary, middle, and then high school. And just to brag for a minute, my son was on the winning quiz bowl team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. He knows too much random information. Oh, okay. And our, you know, our band that you saw um, spent the Mardi Gras week in um, Disney World, but doing the workshop there, not only just performing that day, but doing a full week with the workshop and um, we had some friends going there who just saw them actually march on Mardi Gras Day. But I do want to mention that it was a double-edged sword. They were a little bit disappointed to the, this year the King and Queen of Zulu a actually resides in St. Bernard Parish. And our band had done some things with them um, while they were in all the festivities. And our band was actually invited to lead the Zulu parade this year and had to decline it because we even, they called Disney World and they had to decline it because of the commitment at Disney World. But uh, the king told them that he, they wouldn't be able to leave next year, but whatever float he was on, that they would be able to march with them at that particular time. So I just want to congratulate the band with that because uh, they do an incredible job in their performances throughout the community as well as throughout the metro area. Thank you, Ms. Vojtek. Congratulations again to all of our students. And um, Shaman High, I know, led um, the, the Toad Parade this mm -hmm. Mardi Gras season. And the, it made you proud watching them march down the street. And they, do, they represent St. Bernard Parish so well. And, um, and we're also so proud of the achievements of all of our students. And Ms. Jackson, you must be a very proud mother. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> having Wyatt be a part of that team and do so well. Very so excited. congratulations to all. Ms. Lamu. Again, I echo your um, congratulations. And I also want to thank all of the, the teachers and administrators. I know we have several in the audience tonight, teachers, um, volunteers, that help to make all of these after school programs possible nights, weekends, traveling. So at a time when we've got a national teacher shortage and, um, and a lot of struggles to retain good teachers, I want to thank all of our teachers, administrators, and volunteers for going above and beyond to provide these opportunities for students. So thank you. Anyone else? Okay, next item on the agenda. 
or the um, approval of to incorporate the report of the general committee meeting minutes of February 14, 2023 into the minutes of the February 28, 2023 regular monthly meeting. So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Warner, second by Ms. White. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 11-0. Thank you. Next item is a review of the performance contracts. And Ms. Oche? Yeah, just for informational purposes, we have those administrators whose contracts we intend to renew for July 1, 2023 through um, June 30th of 2025. Thank you, Ms. Foche. And just as we are very, very um, thankful to our administrators and teachers um, who help with all the extracurricular activities, all of these administrators tonight who are um, being recommended for a new renewal of their performance contract. Just want to say we're very blessed to still to have them as part of our team, and they work very, very hard to make sure that our students um, well, have a, a fine education and very well rounded, and they do go above and beyond um, the call of duty. So we are very, very blessed to have them coming back to us. Okay. And this item does not uh, require any action. So we will go to the next item, which is the um, the personal changes. And good evening, Ms. Burchett. Good evening, everyone. You should have the copy of uh, personnel changes since our last meeting. You see there are very few because we did have a, a week-long Mardi Gras break. Um, I do want to point out, though, the retirement upcoming retirement of Dave Brissett. He will be with us the rest of this year and through the summer, but our um, athletic director will be retiring. He has been with us for a while. He, he was there when my sons played at Chalmette High and was quite a, a role model for them, so he will be missed. Dave Brissett. Thank you, Ms. Pritchard. And um, the two retirements are Kay Simon yes. from Araby Elementary, and uh, we want to Thank Kay for her many yes. years of service to um, the students of St. Bernard Parish. We appreciate all those years that you put in to um, help our students, and we want to wish you a very happy retirement. And then David Brussett, as you said, the athletic director. Yes. Um, it's hard to fill his shoes, too. Yes. And um, he's, you know, he. He seems like a really young guy, and he's retiring he's already. Retiring. He's finished his drive. Yeah. yeah. Close to it. Yeah. And he's he done it. very young. He does, and he's, he's done an excellent job also. Yes. And um, he'll, he'll be sorely missed, and, um, but happy retirement to you, Dave. Yes. And, so. yeah, let me just piggyback on that. And, you know, I'm beginning to sound like Mr. Campbell a lot when he talks <laughs> about all the people that he taught. <laughs> but um, I taught David Brassett, you know, when he was in high school as well. He is a fine, fine young man and um, now of retirement age, which is very difficult for me to believe. But in his, you know, as a coach at Shelman High School and now as the athletic director there, it is very, very difficult with the Louisiana High School Athletic Association to have a pristine record over the years. And I know that Mr. Warner has spent many years at, at some point um, on the executive committee there as well. We've had made major contributions, and he has made Wayne Warner in that, uh, in that way. David, as the school's athletic director, we have had an unblemished record. And it is largely due to his efforts because once, you know, we have a very large athletic program and many multiple, you know, many, many different sports, uh, boys and girls sports, and he oversees, runs all of them, makes sure everybody's eligible, makes sure everybody has all the right paperwork and such in, and does an incredible job, not only in that area, because they always say at the LH LHSA, they don't have to worry about Shelman High School. Everything is done exactly um, the way it should be. 
but he's been a great role model for our kids. Mm -hmm. And he's a, just a, a fine, I say, young man who um, has made a major contribution to the development of the young people of our school system and community in his role as a coach and an AD and just an overall great guy and role model. So he will be sorely missed, but he's promised us he's going to be here helping out whoever then would be taking his place, you know, as well. So just congratulations today. And also, um, I'm sorry, um, the support personnel, we have a few retirees mm -hmm. in that area also. Um, we have Rose Barone, uh, we have Olean Baden and Donna Baker. So um, we want to thank them for yes. their many years of service to the St. Bernard Parish School System and for all that they did. They, they did and um, will do. Some of them um, are leaving soon and then some uh, one of them is staying until the end of um, May yes. but we want to thank them and to wish them a very happy retirement yes. yes Rose is the one I talked about last week with my Cora my granddaughter will miss her oh <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> she talks about it right Miss Richard's four-year-old granddaughter was very very upset Sad. to see mm -hmm. that Miss Rose oh, was retiring was she and let me know a professional in her mm -hmm. class. Yes. 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 Well, they will all be missed. Yes. Greatly. Okay. okay. Anyone else? A personal. Miss Warner. I just, I just have to wish Dave a long, happy retirement. And what a great job he's done for Shawmut mm -hmm. High School. I just have to say that to Mr. Brasso. And the middle schools. As a middle school principal, he was a resource to all of us for our programs. Oh, I bet. We could, yeah, see him just a great deal. What a good guy. Great job, Dave. Thanks. Okay. Ms. Lemoyne. And just to take it a step further, he has been instrumental as a support to our NJCAA baseball team at Nunez. So many of our dual enrollment students leave Shamet High and now have the opportunity to play baseball at Nunez. And he has given so selflessly uh, of his time to help establish that program and support it. So thank you to, to David on behalf of the college. Anyone else? Mr. Long. Also, it goes without saying, uh, Mr. Brassett was, uh, was great with the OWL camp also. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, hope, uh, I hope that continues. I hope someone else will, uh, will take that over. But uh, he did a fantastic job with that. Big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Long. Anyone else? OK. Thank you, Ms. Bridget. Okay. We appreciate it. Okay, next item is an approval of school board member training certificates for 2022 calendar year school board member training resolution and there was a recommendation by the committee. Is there a motion by Mr. Warner? Is there a second? Second by Ms. Lemoyne. Any discussion? And um, we do need to read this into the minutes. And it reads as such, school board member re a training resolution whereas each member of a city and parish school boards shall receive a minimum of six hours of training and instruction as re required by Act 705 of the 2011 Louisiana Legislature. And whereas this training and instruction shall, shall consist of school laws of this state, laws governing the powers, duties, and responsibilities of city and parish school boards, educational trends, research, and policy, and whereas such instruction may be received from an institution of higher education in the state from instruction sponsored by the State Department of Education or by an in-service training program conducted by a city or parish school board central office of the Louisiana School Boards Association or training provided at the national level. And whereas each member of a city and parish school board shall receive one hour of ethics training per year of their tenure as board member, now therefore be it resolved that it become public record that Donald Campbell, Diana Dysart, William Egan, Clifford England, Carly Jackson, Kelly Lee Bowman, Catherine Lemoyne, Joseph Long, Shelton Smith, Sean Warner, and Rosalind White, members of the St. Bernard Parish School Board, 
have successfully received and exceeded the six hours of required training is mandated by the Louisiana legislature and all board members have fulfilled the mandate of one hour of ethics training for the year 2022. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 11-0. Thank you, Ms. And just to add to that, as required by law, this must be published in our official journal as well. So we will make sure that that gets done. Thank you, Ms. Uh The next item on the agenda is approval of certified board member for the 2022 calendar year. There was a recommendation by the committee and um, And this was for a board member who has um, met or exceeded 20 hours of training per year. And in the year 2022, Ms. Catherine Lemoyne did complete the 20 hours of training. So she has a um, certificate indicating as a certified school board member for the year 2022. Okay. And this certificate um, is a certificate, certified board member program certificate of merit from January 1st, 22 through December 31st of 22, presented to Catherine Lemoyne of the St. Bernard Parish School Board for voluntarily completing all required in-service training by participating in approved workshops, seminars, and convention designed to enhance knowledge and develop skills needed to contribute to higher, higher standards of elected public school board member service and public school system governance and is officially designated a certified school board member for the year 2022 by attaining 20 or more continuing learning units on the first day of December 2022. And that is signed by the LSB president and by um, the LSBA executive director, Dr. Pope. Congratulations, Catherine. And then we also have do, do a. Do we need a motion um, on 5.3? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Warner? Do we need a motion on 5.3? Yeah, let's vote on that just because we're going to publish it. Three. Oh, on the um, certificates? 5.3? Mm -hmm. 5.2, we have to vote on. Okay. All right, that was uh, for the certified school board member. Okay. That was 5.2. All right, do you make a motion? Two, so moved. Mr. Warner. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Warner, second by Ms. Jackson. Any discussion? Please cast your votes. Motion passes 11 0. Okay, that motion is approved. Next item is an approval of the distinguished school board member for 2019 2022 term. And there was a recommendation by the committee. And this uh, goes to Mr. Clifford England, and um, he has voluntary, voluntarily had com completed all required in service training uh, required by Louisiana Revised Statute 1753 to attain the designation as a distinguished school board member for the four year term commencing January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2022. The, the statute statutory requirements include the completion of a minimum of 16 hours of LSB approved continuing learning units in 2019 and six hours of LSB BA approved continuing learning units in each <coughs> subsequent calendar year. And this uh, was uh, signed by Dr. Janet Pope from LSBA. Uh, is there a motion on the floor? And we do all three at the same time. Uh, we can, or um, they're all they're all the same. the same. Okay, all right. And along with Mr. Clifford England, we have Miss Catherine Lemoyne and Miss Rosalind White. Okay. Before, uh, is there a motion on the floor? In a second. I'll make a motion that we approve it. Okay. Second. A, a motion by Mr. Warner, second by Mr. Long. Just wanna say that these board members 
um, Mr. Clifford England, Ms. Ro uh, former board member Cliff, um, Ms. Rosalind White, and Ms. Kathleen Lemoyne. Again, when beyond and beyond um, the hours necessary for training. Congratulations. So congratulations to y'all and great effort put forth. Anyone else? Okay, there's a motion on the floor in a second. Please cast your votes. Okay. And motion I'll, passes like, 11 zero. Thank you, Ms. Fochek. And at this time, I'd like to present these um, designations. Oops. I think I have captains. <laughs> I need some glasses. <laughs> and we will send Mr. England his uh, certificate. Again, congratulations. Thank you. Swite and Miss Boy. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the administration's request to solicit proposals for ELA workbooks correlated to Louisiana student standards for grades two through five. There was a recommendation by the committee. There's a motion by Ms. Jackson. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Ms. White. Any discussion? There being none, please catch the votes. Motion passes, 11-0. Thank you, I wanna thank our administrator, Ms. Um, Carlton, and all those who worked on this. We appreciate it. Um, okay, next item is an approval of administration's request to solicit proposals for library book fitness. There was a recommendation by the committee. This is Motion by Ms. Lemoyne, second by Ms. Lee Bowman. Any discussion? There being none, please catch your votes. Motion passes 11 0. Thank you. Next item is an approval of the administration's request for permission to advertise for bid for bread, bread products for the period of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024, for the St. Bernard Parish School Board. There was a recommendation by the committee. So motion, motion by Mr. Campbell, <laughs> seconded by Mr. Warner. Any discussion? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 11-0. Next item is an approval of the administration's request for permission to advertise for bid for milk, milk products for the period of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024 for the St. Bernard Parish School Board. There was a recommendation by the committee. There's a motion by Ms. Jackson, is there a second? <coughs> second by Ms. Lee Bowman. No discussion? Please cast your votes. Motion passes 11 0. Thank you. And next item is an approval of administration's request for permission to advertise for bid for food products for the period of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. With the St. Bernard Parish School Board, there was a recommendation by the committee. So moved. There's a motion by Ms. White. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Jackson. Any discussion? Before we vote, I just want to thank Mr. Morrell for his work on all of these bids. We appreciate his work also in food service. Thank you. Okay, no other discussion? Please cast your votes. The motion passes, 11 0. Thank you. Next item are <coughs> uh, items to be placed on the next committee meeting agenda. Ms. Harris. I was here in the fall and I may have missed an update after the fact, but we had a group of substitutes who came asking about 
pay rate changes, and Superintendent, you had said that you would look into that. Um, can we have an update on maybe where that process is, or? Can we do that with the budget presentation, because that's when the plan would be to do that? That would be great. I would appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any items to um, add to the agenda for the next one? Okay, we always have before the committee meeting to add items. Thank you. Okay. Superintendent's notes. Ms. Vocho. Okay, uh, provided is just your um, general fund budget to actual report for expenditures through um, the current month. And along with that, just a reminder that on Friday, March 10th, uh, the Special Olympics, a uh, wonderful event every year. Please uh, make see if you can possibly arrange your schedule, you know, board members to be there for the event that morning and we invite the public to come. It's always a wonderful event to see our um, Special Olympians compete in all of the, um, you know, all of the contests. So, a wonderful day. On the Monday, the 13th, the Chamber is sponsoring that Women's Professional Network again at Shelman High School with the mentoring of the um, female young women. And uh, that should be a great event as well for those students at Shelman High School. <coughs> and um, the, I, I know our high school play was scheduled for March 16th through 18th. I'll have an update maybe at the next board meeting. I'm not certain if that will actually go on. I'm, I, I'll have to speak with the um, sponsors of the play who just lost their mother and I'm not sure how the rehearsals are going so but as of right now it is scheduled for March 16th through 18th for the production at Shelman High School and I'll give you further updates as those are determined okay Miss Fote what's the name of the uh, production I think it's anything goes oh anything anything okay. goes Thank you. And then the um, Olympics, Special Olympics, that is a, a beautiful day. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. um, day with, with, the, um, with the, the students and the smiles on their faces. It just, you know, everybody's a, a winner. They just are just so excited and it's, it's a, a great day. So if um, anybody has the opportunity to attend that, it's, it's a wonderful um, event for the students. And what time does that begin? Is it 9.30? Usually around 9.30. Okay. Um, the buses, it, it's, it's sort of dependent upon when they all arrive because um, as we get students to schools in the morning, then the buses go back around to pick up the children who are coming. So we're shooting for around 9.30 for the beginning. And I know the, the sheriff's office takes part in that and the fire department and, you and know, many, so many, many of the businesses the and community right. partners that we have it's usually a tremendous event for right. and the ladies volunteer um, association you know um, very very um, involved and helpful also and we appreciate everybody who helps um, mr. Fry and is one of the coordinators and everyone else is uh, again a great team to, to make that event a great event thank you okay anyone else is there a motion to adjourn there's a motion by mr. Campbell is there a second second. Second. seconded by miss Rodney all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. any opposition the meeting is adjourned thank you and good night <laughs>